Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Today we're going to talk about this fabulous book by Dr. Kelly Turner. She interviewed and researched over a thousand cancer cases where people healed themselves from cancer and even late stage cancer. And we're going to talk about what are the criteria of how they did it. Nine criteria that everyone that she interviewed shared to some extent. Let's talk about it. Number one is radically changing your diet. For most people, a big change has to occur. There are foods that kill cancer cells, foods that support the immune system, and foods that support cancer cell development. So there are actually foods to avoid and foods to increase the intake. And we talk about it in a video. You can find the link here. And we're going to tell you what is the number one thing that you have to stop eating as soon as you're diagnosed with cancer. Number two, taking control of your health. You have to take an active role in your healing. You can't give away your power. Just, you know, give it off to the doctors and sit back and, um, and say it's all out of my hands. Now. Yeah, it's I've all been out diagnosed of with cancer. There's nothing I can do. Yeah. And in the book, Kelly Turner talks about the fact that even the word patient yeah. comes from the Latin patty, which means to suffer and to submit. To allow, to suffer and to submit. I mean, in this family, the word patient is out because using that word is already giving away some power and it's all about re-empowering ourselves. Number three, following your intuition. In life, we all have a different level of connectedness with our own intuition. When we go in a bad neighborhood and we say, ooh, this doesn't feel right, you have to develop that and give yourself permission to listen to that, even with your doctors and what treatments are being prescribed to you. You have to do your own research and then listen to yourself, your intuition, as well as the doctors and do what makes sense to you. And what makes sense to you is not necessarily what makes sense to us. So even if we give our input in these videos, you always have to follow your intuition and follow what makes sense right. to you. And that could include getting a second opinion. There's a lot, a lot yes. of research right now from even the big hospitals about saying always get a second opinion, even from their own doctors. So yeah. use your intuition to decide which path to follow as you're on your healing journey. Number four. Herbs and supplements. In addition to number one, radically changing your diet, number four is using herbs and supplements that boost your immune system, that it can get rid of cancer, and it changes the conditions under which cancer thrives in your body. It's something I keep repeating to myself is, I'm turning my body into a place that's inhospitable to cancer mm -hmm. and supports healing and health. You have to be very careful with the herbs and supplements, so especially if you're on chemo, you want to make sure, be honest with your medical oncologist, because you don't want to be taking any supplements or additional herbs that would conflict with yeah. or reduce the potency of your chemotherapy. Enjoying this video? Give us a like. Want to see more? Subscribe to our channel. Got an opinion or a question? Write it in the comments below. Any of these will let us know we're on the right track. <laughs> Thank you. Number five. Releasing suppressed emotion. We've heard it so many times by doctors and holistic doctors alike that stress is like an acid in your body. When we're stressed, we develop ulcers and it reduces the power of your immune system. So anything that you have to work on, whether it's in your relationship, we have kinks in our relationship and we're working on them because we know that anything other than the frequency of love is actually detrimental and gets in the way of healing. Yeah, and as fun-loving as I am, believe it or not, I have anger issues. I've been through life, you know, like everybody goes through life, and I've held on to things, and I think that the anger and stress actually contributed to my cancer, yeah. me getting cancer. So, so. And, and that's ongoing work. You don't, you know, work on something once, it's gone. Well, lucky for you if you do, but it's ongoing work, releasing anything that tightens you inside, because the tightening prevents the flow of healing. Number six, 
increase positive emotions. Now, this is one that we have a lot of fun with <laughs> because that's our nature. Yeah. You have to find a way to increase the positive feelings that you feel inside. You know, whether that's old Lucille Ball reruns or slapstick comedy or... Or, or if you like watching like little baby animals that and it makes you go, mm, and it releases full of love inside of you. Babies laughing on the internet. I mean, those are <laughs> hilarious. Pick some things that make you laugh and bring joy so that it's released in your body. Even stuff like gardening or if it's helping out other people, volunteering or just being around people that increase the joy in your life, in your heart. Because anything that you do with love and joy increases the good hormones in your body like oxytocin and those high levels actually... Actually support healing. Thank you very much. And it's kind of counterintuitive because people often get a cancer diagnosis and you feel like you have to be glum all the time because, you know, you shouldn't be cheerful and joyful and have fun after you get this ugly diagnosis. But the more you're glum, the less healing you're allowing your body to have. So give yourself permission, even if sometimes we're inappropriately joyful, but it's much better than being super glum because at least it's supporting your healing. So give yourself permission, despite your diagnosis, people around you tell them, I'm gonna be joyful anyway. <laughs> Number seven, embracing social support. Mm -hmm. Now this is one that's actually kind of difficult for me because I'm, I tend to be kind of introverted. And when I was reading the book again, I realized that I had to do something. I reached out to friends who I hadn't spoken to in years, who I knew we always laughed and joked and would support me emotionally. And I also cut out all of the people on social media who dragged me down. And social support for us, a big difficult one was that we actually started a GoFundMe campaign because our finances is a place we really need help. But oh my God, it took us weeks. But we knew from the book that you have to embrace and ask for help. And that's also a flow of energy. You know, even money is energy. The asking, the receiving, it's a flow. And when you have bad diagnosis, we tend to tense up again, like I said earlier, and that prevents flow of energy and flow of energy is healing. So see where you're blocked. A lot of people don't like asking for help. It's much easier to give it, but open yourself up. If it's hard, it's another kind of healing. If you do it, you'll push through something else. Nice. Number eight, deepening your spiritual connection. Now I know this is a touchy subject because everybody has a different idea about what spirituality means, whether it's through religion or through your own practice or whatever. This is always a delicate one. Yeah. The point of this is that if you believe in a higher power, God, the universe, source, however you want to call it, just surrender part of what is going on with trust, faith, and just believing that there is something else that is at work in your life, that is outside your power, outside your understanding. This is a place where you can give away a little bit of your power to something that is greater than you. And if we just think of the essence of nature, everything wants to heal in nature. That's the natural way of things. You see the trees, they have these big burrs, and everything is towards healing. So when you surrender to a greater force, not only do you allow the divine, if you believe in that, to act in your body and for yourself in your life, but you're also allowing the earth essence to do its thing and promote healing in your body. Number nine, hmm. having a strong reason to live. Yeah. This is one that I know people struggle with. I have some friends who have cancer right now, and unfortunately they are giving up because they just don't see why it's worth the effort. But in order to survive cancer, you have to have something that gets you up every day, something mm -hmm. that stays in front. It's the carrot that keeps you moving forward, keeps you moving forward, having a strong reason to live. Now, in her book, she mentions quite a few people. It's their grandchildren. Or it's one man that was to give away his daughter in her wedding. You've got to find deep, deeper in your heart a strong reason to live that keeps you moving forward, that keeps you focused, doing the right thing to heal yourself. And I want to add to this, that if you don't have that, that's okay too. 
because some people, your destiny, or maybe it's your soul's path, that this is just the end of the road and deep down inside, you're actually okay with that? Well, that's okay too. It's not always about pushing and surviving. So if you do have a strong reason to live, focus on that. And if you don't, be gentle with yourself and in the quiet of your own self, you can tell yourself, I'm actually kind of okay with this and there is no shame to it. It could just be your path. Nice, nice. So in conclusion, it all kind of breaks down into three different brackets of yeah. criteria. Diet and supplements. What you feed your body. What you feed your body. Number two is positive mindset and emotions. What you, what you feed your mind. And using your intuition and your spiritual connection. Which is what you feed your soul. So in all of these cases that Dr. Turner studied and interviewed, they all shared these nine criteria to some extent. Yeah. So this is a fabulous book. There's a link in the description down below. And I can honestly say the first time I had cancer six years ago, this yeah. book changed the prognosis. And changed your mindset. Completely about changed it. my mindset about it. It's a few years old, but the principles in there are not outdated. And actually since then, with the new books that we're reading, the science now really supports every single factor that she mentions in here. So a great way to start, and we'll be talking about other books in the future. That's it, folks. See you in the next video.